My first day, a gun team leader was like, yo, Jake, you ever been in a fight? I was like, yeah, Roger Corporal. And he was like, sick him. And five dudes jumped me. Oh, folks. Let me tell you something. We got a good one today. My man Jake over at Second Ranger Bat jumped on this channel, man, with two feet, 240 golf, and just laid fire down, bro. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. Listen here, man. Dude's talking the truth. All you guys that just want to get there, you don't have no idea what you're getting into. If you ain't got enough grit, go get the grit. Go get the hard work. Go get the manual labor. Sling them hay bales in Tennessee in the summer. But what you're not going to do is just show up and fake it. You ain't going to get into the Ranger Bat, SEAL teams, SF. You ain't going to get in there faking it, folks. I'm just telling you right now. Man, Jake, thank you so much for this awesome video. Hey, as always, man, YouTube is truncating the shit out of my videos. You're going to have to check back in on the page. We're still dropping this fire. You got to show up every day, and that's something, too. I just uh, wanted to talk about Ranger Bat, too. Like, it's, I feel like it's so misunderstood because people just take it at face value looking at the pipeline on Wikipedia. Like, that's where they get their info from, and they see that eight-week selection, and they're like, oh, that's, I'll do that shit. That's the baseline. Once you get in, that's when the real shit starts, and they tell you that the whole time in. Once you get to the battalion, like, they're actively trying to kick you out. Like, you have to show up every day and fucking perform 100%. When does that kind of come off? I know it's a grind every day, but it, at what point do you have enough ranger bat cred for the better part of the word? What point is it? Is it after your first deployment? Is it after a couple deployments? Or is it just one of those things? Like, it's one of those things in the SEAL teams. You could have four fucking deployments and fuck something up and they'll throw your ass out. Yeah, it's the same way with us. You're the new guy until the difference between RASP and Ranger School. Ranger School is the Army Leadership course that you go, it's fucking two months long, and you're just hungry and tired the whole time. RASP is the selection to get you into regiment. Yep. Once you show up and you're the new kid on the block, like I was telling you, like my first day, my gun team leader was like, yo, Jake, you ever been in a fight? And I was like, yeah, Roger Corporal. And he was like, sick him. And five dudes jumped me. And kicked the dude in the face, fucking, his nose went sideways. A guy grabbed an electrical cord, and that was like the last thing I saw was a fucking cord going around my neck. And that shit keeps going on regularly. That's like a daily occurrence until you get sent to ranger school, until you prove that you're not a piece of shit, and they send you that leadership course. Once you get back with a ranger tab, you're like a, automatically promoted to an E4, and your life gets better. But until you have a deployment or two and you get to that kind of gun team leader corporal position, it gets easier, but it's not fucking, it's not cheery. And like you said, like I've seen E7s, we had an E7 that got hurt and I ended up sending him to a bunch of army courses. He came back, failed a PT test, and they kicked his ass out of regiment as an E7. Nope. That part of it never ends. If you don't show up every day, they're going to kick your ass out. But as far as that eight-week pipeline that everyone sees... They say, oh, 50%, 50-50, get through basic airborne and then get to Ranger Bat. My class, I think we started with 160 and we graduated 30. Like, that's not 50%. I've seen classes graduate probably maybe 50% or a little more. And then before I got out, we got a new guy and his class graduated eight guys out of 160. So the info that people get on that is pretty fucking wrong. You know what's crazy to me, Jake? It's just... You've done it. I've done it, right? Like, I went through Buds, and you sit there, and I try to explain to these people. Everybody wants to fucking bang on me about Buds is kindergarten. And then you're going to the NFL. Like, you step in the Ranger Bay, you're in the NFL, man. And cats are like, that can't be. Like, I'm like, look, man, I'm fucking telling you. Like, like Buds is easy. Just show up, fucking put out, fucking pass your test, do your shit. You're good. That your performance yeah. is like yeah, you you got to perform, but you ain't got to fucking perform with a bunch of other seals. Like you ain't got to go in a kill house and fucking not miss targets. Like you don't have to fucking. Yeah. And that's the thing. And I don't have a combat right. Like I got shot in high school, but I don't have no combat. And that's a whole nother level of fucking shenanigans that require you to be fucking dialed in. Because if you fuck up, people are dying. Like I tell everybody. Like in the seal team, someone dies every fucking month. I didn't believe this shit, man. I, like, when I got to the SEAL teams, you come out of BUDS, and for six months, you're fucking terrified. Like, at least I was. I was an officer. I grew up fighting. I grew up as a wrestler. 
And these fuckers were trying to get me to go to Fight Club for fucking six months, bro. I was terrified, man. It's six months of just terrification of just, I don't want to fuck with nobody. These dudes are badasses. And then you've been there long enough, and pretty soon you figure out they're just regular people that have a fucking extraordinary set of skills. And in a fight, one-on-one, if you wrestle and you can fight, you can beat pretty much most of them, okay? And, but like, I try to explain it to people, and they just sit there, and they're like, they, they can't fathom that something that has so much apparent, like, I'm going to call it mysticism and stupidness, right? Like buds, rasp. Like Ranger School. They can't believe that truly is just kindergarten. Like, they're sitting there and they're like, How is this fucking kindergarten? I'm like, Motherfucker, wait until you out in the middle of the ocean in the middle of the fucking night with no life jacket on. They always want to know about like the training up, the selection. And you're like, Look, man, you need to be in as good shape, as good a shape as you can before you go in. But then it's like, after that, selection is whatever they make it. Once you get to your unit, like, that's when the real shit starts. My first day after I got choked out, they fucking woke my ass up and i went and zeroed my rifle we were doing shoot houses that night and that was the first time i'd ever worn like dual tube nods or any of that shit and my team leader was like if you get anybody hurt in the shoot house i'm gonna kill you and he said that and i fucking believed him i was a dumbass kid and i was like holy fuck and that was like day one and you just hit the ground running if you can't keep up physically if you're not gonna perform like if you can't shoot worth the shit if you can't do any of this they're not gonna keep you so let me ask you this. You talk about keeping up. Give me some examples. Like when you first got to the team, what was a long run for you guys at second bat? It just depends. Like one day we, my team leader came in. He's like, get your kid on, get your rifle, draw your weapons. We're going for a run. And then I think that run ended up being seven, eight miles for a fucking kit run. That sucked ass. What was the Dude, pace like, of that run? probably eight minutes something like that okay eight and a half minutes give or take i don't know yep been a while we'd regularly do anywhere from five to ten miles consistently my particular fire team was a lot more into like short intense shit like hill sprints fucking olympic lifts things like that but i would say a longer run for us anywhere from i guess 10 miles would be like some of the longer runs you do but we were doing fucking eight mile kit runs and shit like that around yeah. airfields. And then we did longer runs too. That just wasn't like the norm for your morning PT. I know I was at SEAL Team 8. We pretty much were capped off at like seven miles, six miles. But every now and then they throw in a 13 miler or a 12 miler. And so we would run every other weekend. We'd run 13 miles yeah, on Saturdays. Yeah, you'd have shit like that. Every once in a while they would just keep fucking going. And you like lost count of how many miles you're running. You'd hit like seven, eight mile mark. And they just keep going, and maybe you'd run another four or five miles and end up doing 12, 13. My particular dudes were a big fan of kit runs, like three-mile kit run, climbing a 30-foot, grabbing the top bar at 30 feet and hanging, doing like a dead hang for 30 seconds, and then getting on the rope, fucking going down, sled carries, buddy carries. My dudes love goddamn buddy carries. And I had an MMA fighter in my team, and dude weighed 230 without kit on, and then we went get on you as heavy as fuck and you get stuck carrying that guy and uh, if you collapse on your knees like that's not gonna be a fucking good day yeah no. carrying some heavy ass dude and kid i just i just heard about a guy in the seal teams basically they set him up man and he had to pick up a couple dudes and he couldn't do it like he couldn't do it he couldn't pick the guys up off the ground and they were like you gotta go and that's yeah. the thing that no one really understands and, and like we can sit here and tell them, but I'm just, this fucking generation is delusional. Like, just crack smoking fucking delusional. Like, I keep hearing, if you don't quit it, Budge, you can make it. I'm like, no. You fail pool comp, you get kicked out. You yeah, fail that's... drown proofing, you get kicked out. You fail, you get to the fucking SEAL teams, you still get kicked out. You yeah, know? that's and that's the thing in Ranger Regiment. I forget what the minimum time is. But if you don't get your Ranger tab within a certain amount of time, maybe it's 12 months or 15 months, I can't remember, they kick you out like you're done. Yeah. So if you're a piece of shit and you keep fucking feel like you're ready to go to school, they just, you're done. That's it. You'll never get promoted and they'll fucking kick your ass out. Give me Any some examples of, of something that got you saw some guys get kicked out for. Fucking just AD in your weapon. A guy rode the bolt for it on a 240. It was a long ass night. We've been hitting shoot houses all night since we started at 8.30 that night, and we got done at 4 in the morning. Coming back in, everyone's dead tired. You shot fucking literal 
close to a thousand rounds that night just in CQB environments, throwing bangers, throwing nine bangers. Your head's all, you know, your fucking ears are ringing. You're tired. A guy got back. Something happened where he didn't clear the 240, rode the bolt forward. It fucking went off, and it was it. It was like, all right, bud, sorry, man, see ya. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. You have it was fucking as simple a- as an eight and negligent. This another guy showed up, and this is fucking terrible to say. He looked like he just. He didn't look like it, you know what I mean? He was like a small dude. He had some sort of fucking spinal issue. The guy could run a five mile in like sub 30 minutes. Fucking absurd cardio stud. They just didn't like him. And the other dudes, they made him fight his other guys, the new guys in his squad every fucking day. They hated him. And one day, one of his own guys picked him up, fucking body slammed him on the ground. He hit his head and got a concussion. And they sent him to some sort of weird little supply thing for a few days. And they literally got rid of him because they didn't like him. And I know that's a shitty thing to do, but that's just the fucking nature of it sometimes. Yeah. He just didn't fit in with the culture. Yeah. What would you describe the culture as? So when I was in, it was like, you get in, you fit in quick. I guess it's getting a little more relaxed because Range Regiment has changed a lot over the last 15 years. But there's still like that culture of you're going to be a fucking meat eater and you're going to get after it, and you have to be, like, aggressive as fuck. And they ask you all the time, they're like, why would you join the Army? And if your answer isn't because I wanted to fucking kill people, you're getting smoked for that shit. What are the stories you got, like, about that initial new guy? Like, give me one of the things that was just fucking hard as shit to do every day that you had to do every day. I know you keep saying showing up, but put that in, quantify what it means to show up every day. Quantify that so that some people listening can understand. Bro, it ain't as easy as just like coming to work on time in the morning and having a positive attitude. Let's say you show up that morning, you're going to do fucking PT, whatever, just gut check of a PT. Like I did mornings with PT with my fire team that was harder than anything I did in RASP. Like just a straight fucking gut check where you're like, God damn, whatever it was. Hit run, obstacle course, fucking some insane god awful circuit workout your team leader made you get back and then they're saying we're gonna fucking go to the range you draw weapons go to the flat range for an hour or two hours with like five or six of your dudes shoot for a minute come back if you're not actively doing like a training event like shoot houses your team leader is going to start running you through battle drill six clearing rooms they're going to start teaching you about demo like you have to be on the fucking ball with that like learning your msds building charges what charges are what, learning all the fucking little acronym shit, learning all your uh, your point and area for all your weapons. The whole time this is going on as a new guy, you're getting fucking smoked. Whether that's doing quali carries because you got the area range of a 320, your 40 mic mic wrong, and then they're like, all right, and you're fucking quali carrying your buddy for half a fucking mile back. And then they're like, get up, what's the fucking point area of a saw? And wrong answer, all right, go hit the fucking ropes. And this goes on, this is all day every day this doesn't fucking end that would be like a normal week when you're not doing night training when you come in at night training you come into work at five or six in the afternoon for a verse schedule you're hitting the shoot house you might do a dry run with blanks and then you're going live rounds and if you do anything fucking wrong in that shoot house that makes your team leader notice you you're gonna have a fucking rough night while everyone's sitting around re-kitting eating or reloading you're gonna be fucking they do something they call qualifying where they find a tree or telephone pole and you climb up about seven, eight feet and then you turn upside down and you just fucking bear hug it and you hang there until they tell you to get down or you're going to be doing your push-ups, flutter kicks, your normal shit. And then it's go get your fucking nods on, reload your mags, we're going back in. It's drilled in you like you have to be perfect all the time. Like when you fuck up, you're going to pay for it. And uh, sometimes... It just, it's just the nature of the game. Like you, Sometimes you're going to fuck up because you're tired, you're new, and they know that, but they're still going to be like that. When you fuck up, you're going to be in pain, and that's, that just prepares you for fucking combat the whole time. And then once you start getting a good flow with your fire team, because it's going to happen where you're just fucking hitting rooms, and you're like, oh, yeah, we're fucking, we know what we're doing now. And then you think you've made it, and then your team leader is just like, whatever, go fucking hit the tree line. And then get back to your company area three or four in the morning and then you're fucking unloading your Humvees, your M razors, whatever you took out. And uh, then usually when you get back and they're waiting for weapons to all get turned in, that's when the stupid shit starts where they start pairing off privates to fight each other. And then they're like, you got a fucking cock fight where everyone's circled up. And after all the nights of fucking running your shoot house, 
learning demo and doing all that shit all day. Now, like when you're at your lowest point and you're the most tired, ready to go home, that's when you start getting paired off to fight other dudes. If you lose, you feel like a bitch, and then there's going to be more pain after that. So it pays to be to win everything you do. Let me ask you this: Did you see anybody quit? Did anybody just walk out of the bat doing cockfights? Or did anybody just tap out, fuck it, I can't do this shit no more, I'm out of here? Yeah, we had a guy that was in the second platoon. I was in third platoon. He was in second platoon. It was like a fight. He got his ass just fucking wrung. His nose was bleeding. And the next day, he went to his platoon sergeant. He was like, hey, sergeant, like, I'm, I can't do this. And I think they sent him to a supply office for a while and kind of let him ride it out until they sent him to wherever. And uh, another guy quit in NTC in California. We were uh, doing a night raid. And we ended up doing like a 10 or 12 mile movement at night in fucking Fort Irwin when it's 90 degrees at night. And we were taking this ridge and we were bounding up like, it was like fucking bouldering. There were like seven, eight foot boulders we were climbing over. Dudes were like falling and shit. And this one guy like threw in the towel at the end of the night. He was like, yo, I'm done. And they were like, you still got to fucking walk out of here. But he quit after that. Yeah. You in some shit when motherfuckers start quit. And that's like, I, I'm trying to think like, I ain't really never seen it. In the SEAL teams, by the time you get to the SEAL teams, because our pipeline is so fucking long, like, I, I didn't see anybody quit. Nobody's quitting on nothing, really. But, I mean, we had some guys fucking just disappear. But everybody quits because everybody gets out. Like, eventually you've reached your shelf life of what you think the job is or how much pain you want your body to take or how unfunctional you want to be as a human being. And everybody quits at the end. I assume when you're telling me all that shit and you got E1s, E2s, E3s, I just assume that you had people quitting out there. Yeah, and that's what I was saying. Like, everyone looks at that eight-week grass pipeline and they're like, oh, yeah, I'll fucking do that, no problem. Maybe you do get in, no problem. But the thing is, like, that pipeline isn't over until you get that Ranger tab and you prove to everyone that, like, you're a fucking solid player. So realistically, you know, that pipeline goes from eight weeks get to bat, maybe you go to ranger school in eight months, ten months, so then you tack on another ten months, ranger school is fucking eight weeks of, and if you come back without that ranger tab, they might give you another shot to go back, or they might just fucking cut you. A lot of guys that would cut failing ranger school, though. How are guys failing that? Pure vows are a huge one. When you show up to ranger school, if you're a ranger private, because I was there with a fucking colonel, like you got West Point grads, you got high-ranking dudes, when you show up and you're that PFC from ranger bat, they expect you to carry the heavy shit and know how to fucking place guns, know all the small unit shit. So if you're not carrying heavy shit and you're a lower enlisted like I was, like I said, I went through when I was a PFC, they'll peer you. A lot of the officers stick together. Heat cats are a big one because you got to understand you're not going through ranger school at your best. Like you're eating one meal a day and you're sleeping. There were nights you don't sleep at all. Somebody fucks up putting in the patrol base and you're going 48 hours no sleep. Like people lose their shit. So basically, it just breaks you down to the point where the strongest, biggest dude looks like a fucking Auschwitz prisoner. There's a lot of luck involved, too, getting to go on your patrols. But yeah, you have to pass your patrols when you're that team leader or that platoon leader or whatever. Um, that's the biggest thing is people just fail the patrols. Yep. That's what I saw the most of, people not yep. making it. I wanted to get you on here because you were like, nah, man, like, shit, every fucking day you got to fight it out. We're yeah, it's just, it's a misunderstood. People still think of Ranger Battalion as like being in that 1990s like light infantry unit. And now like you're essentially just an extension of JSOC. And there's a lot of, like you had a kid on the other day who was wanting to do like JTAC or PJ or whatever the fuck it was. And like, those are all cool jobs. I'm not denying it. But if you go to Ranger Battalion as an infantry guy and you decide you don't want to just hang out in the line platoon, they'll send you to the fucking sniper section They'll send you to the reconnaissance. You can be a K-9 dude as an infantry guy. Or like I said, the recce. There's a ton of different shit to do just at that base fucking infantry level. I tell everybody, you guys are basically a fucking SEAL team now. That's exactly what, like, you guys, it used to be you guys were airfield seizures. Now the fucking Rangers are the yeah, exact exactly. same as Navy fucking SEAL. Did you have a set of fins? Did you guys ever do water jumps in the Lake Wash or American Lake? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no shit. Like... The same as we're over there fucking around in the middle of the desert. You guys can do all that shit. And that's what people like. They're like, why would I? I'm like, look, dude. You have a chance going in the Army. You going in the Navy as a SEAL right now? Unless you're just one of them fucking dudes. 
you said it. Like you got to have some luck to get through. But the other thing is, you just got to be tough enough. And whatever's happening, and I know what's happening in this generation. They're fucking total social media dudes, and it's fucking crushing them because they have no no grit, no resiliency, none. Yeah, and another thing too is like you being in the navy. I guess if you fail buds, they pretty much send you wherever the fuck they want you. Whereas, like, the Army, if you go in as an infantry airborne dude, you fail RASP, you fail SF selection, you can still be fucking airborne infantry and try again later on and maybe not just be completely hating your life. Yeah, like, on a ship, hating your life. Like, really, like, you went from being a badass and dirty and carrying a gun to fucking chipping paint with a fucking paint chipper or painting all day or just fucking... I tell people, this is the one that a lot of people don't know about in the Navy that's just fucking atrocious. Your birthing compartment is the size of a, let's say, two school buses, okay? And it's got 48 dudes living in it with four showers. And when I tell you it smells like a fucking asshole, like it smells like somebody didn't wipe their ass for fucking months. And that's where you live. Like you can't get off the ship until you're fucking E5 married. And some yeah, of the E6s, well, most of the E6s, if you're not married, you're on a ship until you make E7. I got a couple dudes that got college degrees that enlisted in the Navy to go SEALs. And I tried to talk them out of it, but they went. They failed. And now they're in the regular Navy, and they calling me crying. And I just laugh at them, man. I'll be like, look, man, I'm sorry, bro. I don't want to hear about your fucking pity party, bro. Like, I told you, you could be an officer in the Army right now. Shit, brother, what are you yeah, doing now? Uh, what, what are you working on now, Jake? So I have a farm. I got cattle and shit, and I'm also a security contractor. Uh, I'm trying to finagle my way into Africa right now for an anti-poaching gig. I've got a guy out there I've been talking to. But, yeah, just all sorts of shit. Is the money good? The gig in Africa isn't, but I've got money coming in from the home front doing farming and shit. No, no, I'm saying like, like, a, like what's a ranger back contractor getting on the open market right now going abroad? thousand dollars a day fifteen hundred dollars a day that just depends entirely on the contract yeah some of the higher paying contracts are anywhere from a thousand to two thousand dollars a day but most of the time you're looking at like a salary a lot of guys can do like the whips three contract where now they're basically wanting only special operations because the market's flooded after afghanistan closed and a lot of those contracts are like 90 to one hundred and twenty thousand a year it just depends really so it ain't crazy that ain't like, like no. chances of getting killed. It's nothing too crazy. Okay. But 120, 120 right. for a, a 12 month contract. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about that one. It depends. Like I live on the Tennessee Kentucky border, so 120 grand for me is going to be a lot different than for you in Washington State. It's just interesting because the 2000s, it was fucking fifteen hundred dollars a day, and that's the height yeah. of the war. Blackwater was making fucking shit tons of money. We had a bunch of dudes riding the ships. It's twenty one thousand for a three week contract. So twenty, basically a thousand dollars a day to ride ships through the pirate coast off of Somalia and all that. All right, brother, what do you else you think they need to hear about just that fucking foray into Ranger Bat? Man, the only thing that I can really think that I'd like to talk about really quick is I hear the most convoluted bullshit about guys talking about the pipeline to CAG or like the best thing to go to CAG or a special missions unit. For people that don't know, there's five tier one units. You've got CAG and Dev Group. Those are your big, your main ones. You've got the fucking, the special activities division. You've got the fucking Air Force STS dudes, wherever they are. And then the fifth one is called RRC. That stands for Ranger Reconnaissance Company. And inside of Ranger Regiment, there's a tier one unit. It's a reconnaissance unit for the military. Yep. Those guys are pretty much entirely made up from dudes from Ranger Bat. It's a fucking hidden gem. And uh, the first time I saw those guys, we were in Afghanistan. We got sent up to northern Afghanistan to work with these RRC. It was my fire team. We were going to embed with them, wearing like civilian clothes and bombing around in a land cruiser. And this fucking little V-bid looking vehicle pulls up, and these two big ass Afghan looking guys get out. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And the guy's like, hey, what's up, man? Like plain English. And he's wearing traditional Afghan garb. And he takes off his fucking garb and he's wearing like a low-vis plate carrier and he's got an MP7 slung. And those were the two RC guys at our contacts where we worked with them for a month. And that's a cool fucking job. 
and uh, they recruit from like civilians they recruit from other parts of the army but it's all like e6 or e7 and above they're a tiny unit but they are headquartered at ranger battalion and it, that's some cool shit too that people don't know about does each battalion have a like a detachment of them or no so the way it works each battalion will have a reconnaissance section but that's just made up of like guys that want to go there that's not like the tier one unit the rrc guys are like a standalone thing they usually work alone but you go through like instead of otc like the cag and dev guru goes through they go through rtc which is like reconnaissance training course or some shit and uh, they basically work in like pairs of two sometimes like bigger teams but they just rotate in and out with individuals or whatever battalions deployed because ranger battalion is constantly deployed first second third and it rotates yep so they'll have two guys in country usually or and they just filter in and out i take it a lot of their shits over at the three-letter agency training if they're doing two-man yeah, work a lot yeah they're, they're doing a lot of shit over there with ground branch Yep. So Ground Branch, which is a CIA-run program, uh, back in the day, early Afghanistan, it was run by you guys and DevGrew. DevGrew had it. They took over DevGrew's air assets, and they take, like, the medics, fucking snipers, team leaders, however that works out. And around 2010 or 11, Ranger Battalion, or Ranger Regiment, took over Anzoff, which Ground Branch, Anzoff, same thing. Yep. So if you're, again, sniper, medic, or a combo guy, Anzoff will snatch up these rangers and go with them so rather than doing your normal direct action raids now you're bombing around with fucking hands off or ground branch doing their shit with them and you're getting paid a fuck ton of money and it's they do some cool shit you getting paid more money yeah because they pay you like per diem and clothing allowance for a lot of times and those guys end up usually making way it's, it's sketchy how they do it but they end up making way more money than us on deployment gotcha gotcha okay of the guys that you saw go to CAG, how many of them came in the regiment? So CAG is made up almost entirely of Ranger Bat dudes and SF. I think there might be a couple SEALs in CAG. I'm not really sure. It seems like most of y'all go dev group, which makes sense. It is like you have to apply for it and then be invited to the selection. The weird thing about Ranger Bat is before you can become an E7, they make you go somewhere else and spread your knowledge in like a conventional unit it's called abrams charter then before you can become a first sergeant they send you out to the big army to be a first sergeant before you can come back and be a ranger first sergeant so what ends up happening is the reason rangers go over to sf is because they've done that squad leader time and before they can take a platoon they don't want to go to a big army for a fucking eight months so they just say fuck it and drop a packet and go to sf so guys who are like Ranger First Sergeants are super fucking dedicated to staying in regiment because they've had to leave twice and come back. And you have to go through RAS 2, which is like a whole nother RAS program to be a higher enlisted. The guys that go CAG, usually the guys I've seen make it aren't the guys that like you're saying are like, I'm an E2, I'm just here because I'm going to go to CAG. It's usually guys that finish that squad leader time and they're like, I don't want to fucking go to Green Berets because fuck those guys or whatever. So they drop a CAG packet, get selected to go to uh, the selection, and then they end up making it. The guys that are, like, super gung-ho, I've never seen fucking make it. Jake, it's just crazy. Like, these young kids are like, oh, yeah, I'm going to CAG. I'm going to dev group. I'm like, yo, you ain't even got the fucking budget. I'm going to do that. Exactly. I'm like, come on, man. Stop the nonsense. Like, I was at fucking SEAL yeah, teams. Like, go ahead. Yeah, focus, focus on fucking... And getting through like basic training first right there were guys that were with me in basic that were talking about going to sfas or guys that were going to rasp and they were like they were never present they were always thinking about the next thing and it was like dude you fucking suck at rucking we're in basic training like why don't you fucking worry about this shit first yeah yeah it's like you said though all the fired up motherfuckers to go try to do some shit never made it and that's what i saw you know, the guys I went that I know that went to Dev Group were just fucking Mark One Motto kick ass fucking dudes. Never really said nothing. Like yeah. the two the officers I know over there, them motherfuckers, because you get pulled over there as an officer, right? They're like, hey man, we want you to apply. Even the enlisted dudes, like they you got a fucking dog. Our community's so small. Like you're not going over there by accident. You're not just gonna put a package in and fucking get over there. And that's the probably the difference between us and like big army. 
there's 2,700 seals. They got a big-ass board. When your name goes up on that board, there's a big-ass comment section next to your name. And motherfuckers write in, this motherfucker be fine over here. Or there's no fucking way. That turd burglar lost his gun on a movement fucking four years ago at Fort Pickett. And we had to look for his gun for fucking ten hours. Some vicious shit. Because they don't fucking care. You know how it is. So... What else, Jake? What yeah, else you got? Uh, that's what you're saying they're small. In Ranger Regiment, it fluctuates anywhere from 2,900 guys to like 3,600 on the high end. There's more fucking Green Berets. There's like close to 6,000 SF dudes right now, and then they have that National Guard unit. I might be off there. By- no, you're right. I didn't ask you this. What was your background before you went in the Army? What was your athletic background, your grit background? Like, where'd you come from? So I'm from Tennessee, so football was fucking name of the game. I played football since I was fucking 10 years old until I was until I graduated high school. And I worked when I was 16. I was working in greenhouses and hay farming. And, and I had some days where I would wake up, hay farm, wake up at 5 in the morning and go throw in hay bales and then go straight to football practice and then get done and go back and do other shit. So if I wasn't fucking throwing hay bales, it was playing football and shit like that. That was basically all I did before. So hard-ass manual labor. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Slinging hay bales is right up there with fucking hard-ass manual labor. It don't, because I don't know, were you picking bales off the ground or were you picking them off the feeder? Like stacking hay bales on, no, the, on so, a truck. Uh, yeah, we, we did square bales for horses and it was like, it would go spit bales out the back and then we're out there is fucking seven. 17 year old slinging bales off the ground in the trailer all yep. fucking day. Yep. So there was some pretty brutal that shit. And it's really cold in the summer in fucking Tennessee, correct? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Three. Yeah. yeah. Fucking. Yeah, mel- about mel- 102 degrees. 100% humidity. 